we finally did it. We completely get rid of our front-end dependency, Next.js and SvelteKit. And we are only using Golang with HTMX. And this is not a meme, this is not a clickbait. If you want to know why we did it and how we did it, you definitely need to watch this video. But first of all, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up and leave all your questions in the comments. And of course, jump into the Discord community, all links in the description, right? So first of all, um, who is so, uh, this thing is, is Svelkit? Well, it's Lavenue, right? So basically, Lavenue is a company I uh, fun started, founded three years ago with a, with a couple other good people. And um, we recently actually got a Series A uh, funding of 8 million. So it's not it's not a joking company, right? It's, it's a big deal. We also acquired two other companies. And two years ago, we uh, wrote our platform or marketplace in uh, Next.js, right? Everything in Next.js, everything was fine. Uh, no big of a deal, good piece of technology, right? But of course, right now we, are, we need to scale a lot. Uh, we need to rethink our, how our marketplace is working. And we decided to make a V2, right? A complete rewrite. Sometimes, hey, it is what it is. So, so with all the feedback we gathered over the past three years, we are going to make a version two. And um, we were thinking, okay, cool. We have the opportunity to rewrite. What are we gonna use? And we decided with three other people, which basically my included, so two other people, we decided to go with SvelteKit in the front end and Golang in the back end. Sounds like a power duo, you know what I mean? Sounds like a good stack to, to, to work in, and that's true. But, but, we came in some, some, some problems. So this is the why part, right? So we have SvelteKit in the front end, Golang in the back end, um, but the only thing we were doing actually was we didn't want to use client-side rendering on the front end, right? So we were using SvelteKit with the, with the server-side rendering, but we had all our business logic sitting in the Golang backend. So the only thing we were doing was just rendering HTML, duplicating the types, TypeScript, and proxying the request to the backend, right? That's the only thing we're doing. So there's a lot of shenanigans going on for nothing, right? So if we have a handler, uh, if we have some some kind of an API call uh, in, in, in the backend that returns some JSON, we needed to go into the front end, render the HTML, make the types, do the call, but actually just proxy it, right? So it, it's it's on the it's on the back end, right? So it's not from the it's on the server side uh, stuff from uh, on SelfKit instead of the client side stuff. So it's basically just a proxy, right? Yeah, and that was just annoying because if I was working on the back end and I needed to just change some little, some small little HTML value or whatever in the front end, I just needed to open up the whole SvelteKit stuff. I needed to make the types, I needed to make the proxy request, I needed to do all the, all that authentication needs to be okay, the user, the yada yada, the state. It was annoying. So we did the thinking process like, guys, listen, do we really need to have that front end complexity, right? Although our marketplace is very interactive, right? It's a big thing. It's a lot of things are happening, but still, is is it worth it to have these two separate things, the front end and the back end? Especially if you don't have a mobile app, right? If you have a mobile app, you could basically question what we're doing, but we don't have a mobile app because using Lavenue on a mobile app is basically just I don't know playing soccer with no legs. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't do that. Maybe we will later on, but it's going to be a subset, right? <clears throat> so we were thinking, guys, listen, we need to get rid of this, of this, uh, of of this, of this front end dependency. But the only thing that was holding me back, because I did a lot of Golang backends, like like PHP, like Laravel, or like Ruby on Rails, where you have everything in your backend and you render templates, which is just a breed of fresh air to work in. The problem with Golang is that your templates are basically not type safe. That's the only problem you have in Golang, right? Because you have a map with some data you want to basically use in your HTML, but if you be, it's a map, so it's not it's not type safe, right? If you mistype a string, you have no value, and then debugging is gonna be very hard, especially if you have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of templates. But Joel from uh, also from the community, but also uh, an employee of Revenue, he came up with this. He came up with this. He said, Anthony, listen, look at that, temple. And I said, what the hell is that? 
an HTML templating language for Go that has great developer tooling. And boy, oh boy, it's completely insane. People are sleeping on this. I don't know what I never heard of this. This is just a sleeper thing, especially if you know how to use it. Right? So it's just basically template files, but you use them as it's just a Go file. So it means that you can write Golang in your HTML, a little bit the same as uh, using G, uh, using a function in, in, next, in, uh, next, in React actually where you're returning a JSX. It's actually almost the same, right? So this completely changes the game because now you have uh, type safe values, right? It's just Golang, it's just Golang, it's crazy. For example here, right? You have this index with errors. You can have layouts. You can just write, but it was a good example. You can just look at that. This is a diff and you can write Golang inside of this thing. You can make, you can even make input components. You can make, it's crazy. Let me know if you want to see uh, an in-depth video on how we set that up. If you want to see an in-depth video on how to use that, right? On how it works, on how we made it work. Like it's crazy, right? Uh, let that know in the comments if you want to see that. If you have enough comments, if you have enough likes on the video, I will make a special tutorial for this <clears throat> because I think it's it's a sleeper stack. Uh, and if you basically use it well, man, this is this is insane. Uh, what's going on here? Yeah. So um, yeah, you can see you can just write write goal line. and then your handler. Let me open up a handler here. Uh, is the out handler? <clears throat> you can see what you do here is basically. Um, for example, if you have errors here, if we have templates, if we have uh, sign up errors, we can just return login index with errors, which is basically just uh, this thing, right? With errors directly from Golang, right? So you have typed errors and you can do whatever whatever you want with that, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's that easy, right? Uh, the cool stuff is with this templating thing is that you it works very good in VS Code because there is a plugin. I think it's also for Vim. Not quite sure you need to check it, but you can GD and the, uh, go to definition and all this stuff, right? Isn't that amazing? You can basically just do, boom. You're, you're, it's 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 insane. It's crazy. Uh, you can see what what Joel is doing here. I shared the logo, so it's a complete uh, component stuff. It's wild, guys. I swear, I cannot even even stop talking about it it's just insane so big credits to Joel for finding this because i didn't know right so that's that's what we that's what it is right and if you want to build that i don't know if it's going to run but you just make run it's compiling these templates like a madman right it's compiling all these templates it's generating go code for you and you don't need to look at that and it's just boom using the echo framework by the way um if you want to know why if you want to know why let, let me know i will make uh, a video about it right so that's actually it, what I want to show you. We're also using HTMX here and there um, for minor stuff. Uh, I'm not quite sure where, but it's just very minor, right? So if you want to have some, we have some a couple of use cases, but we didn't port everything yet, but I'm going to definitely make a follow-up video where we're using uh, HTMX where needed, right? To uh, reduce the amount of TypeScript, JavaScript we need in the front end. Although what I want to show you is that we we use uh, some stuff, right? Because there are some uh, use cases where you really need that JavaScript. Well, that's no problem. You just uh, do that, right? Of course, I did not do an npm run or uh, npm build or something. Uh, that's why this is basically uh, still uh, working. But you can write just JavaScript TypeScript here and uh, use that with these templates and all that stuff. Uh, Insane, I know it's 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 amazing, guys. Uh, this speeds up our our uh, development process uh, a shit ton, right? Because now we don't need to juggle between front end back end. Uh, deployment is just a breeze, man. With the GitHub runners on our server, we just boom, we push to master and it's deployed, right? It's just a make run, um, and and it's there. That's the power of Golang, right? Um, yes. So that's it, guys. Let me know. Check out, uh, I will put some, some uh, links in the description. Check out this templating language, pretty amazing. Um, like this video, leave some comments, especially if you want to see me make a follow-up video uh, with a tutorial on how to set that up. <clears throat> leave it in the comments, give me a thumbs up, boost this video into the algorithm, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video or live stream. Peace out.